After the most uh, severe deep slip in history of mankind, on my uh, last account, oh, on my real account, my old account is still there. This is my new account. Uh, I'm also wearing a bra today, and even though I put my hands up, my tits will not show. So maybe we're good, you know. Maybe we're good. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make dinner. I'm really hungry. I can't afford to eat almost <laughs> at this time. I am very poor. So uh, I waited a long time. I just eat like, uh, uh, I've not been eating for, um, properly for a while. And I tried to put up a GoFundMe um, so you could, I don't know if there's something on the camera here, wait a second. Uh, go find me. Um, so people could, you know, support, support my arts. <laughs> uh, that did not go well. TikTok uh, called that a uh, attempt to fraud. And so I couldn't do that. I don't know if it's something with the, every time I try to use go found me, uh, the platforms ban me. Um, I, it must have something to do. They don't like GoFundMe, but I do have an OnlyFans. But I think for those people who don't want to see me naked and still want to support me, then maybe there should be like a, a middle ground. But you know, and I'm gonna do this live, and then I'm gonna dedicate the rest of the month to my OnlyFans page because you know uh, I need to eat, and right now I'm not eating, so. Uh, this is a rare occasion. Um, I'm gonna make some. I'm just gonna make some food and we can talk, you know. Is that okay with you? Uh, I'm gonna make bruschetta. It's, um, it's cheap, you know. I'm just gonna see. I wonder where I put all the ingredients at. Wait a second. Um, yeah. So, this is my breakfast for tomorrow. I'm gonna leave it there. And this is what I'm gonna have for dinner. A tomato, uh, mozzarella. And then I have some old, uh, still I've got some fresh basil, basil here uh, still. I'm just gonna maybe uh, put you up here so you can see me. Or maybe I don't know. I'm just gonna take a chair and sit down and talk to you. bread and I'm, I'm gonna just cut it in half like so I'm really hungry I'm I don't have um, I really don't have money to eat and haven't had for a long time you couldn't tell because miraculously I'm still you know gaining sort of weight even though I don't eat at all <laughs> it's interesting so yeah I'm gonna just do this in half and I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil on top of that. <laughs> yeah, this dress is new. I bought it yesterday, uh, second hand. I think I paid maybe 20 kroners for it. And this is a bow. It's the bow, I have put paper clips here because the bow, I, I need actually new. This bow was not, attached properly so I needed to put some paper clips there so this is <laughs> this is not my color it's not really my color but um, it's my style sort of so it's a compromise and then I have my uh, headband my usual headband that I usually use to embarrass my dates 
uh, if you live in Sweden and really want to embarrass your date, uh, just turn up on town with this headband on. That will be enough. Uh, I've done this several times on dates. I've used this headband. <laughs> And the men I've dated they have been so embarrassed, uh, uh, they want to die. That is how open the Swedish society is, you know? I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil here. Do, 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 do. A lot of olive oil. I'm, and then I'm going to wash a tomato. A tomato, a tomato, a tomato, a tomato. What I'm gonna do this summer, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, my life is uh, a shit show. I don't have any money, I don't have a job. Uh, I'm doing nudes for money just to pay the rent. Um, I'm also, you know, I have a custody battle with my children that's going on. Um, and um, a lot of shite going on, to be honest. I'm really, really uh, tired uh, after a year of the battle and um, no money for a long time. I'm just fending for myself. I don't have a job. I, was, I need like a job. I need some stability in life and I can't get it, you know. It's been like this for many, 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 many years. I can't get any stability in life. I can't find a job. I can't get any money. Uh, I like, everything is just going to shit repeatedly. Um, I, if I can sell some furniture, well, I already did kind of, tried at least. Uh, most of my furniture are like Ikea furniture. So um, nobody wants to pay for that because everybody already has it, you know. I tried to sell like so far uh, things like that nobody wants to pay for that to be honest so it's really hard to sell any furniture and I do have some other furniture here but it's I don't know where I don't know if it's worth any money or anything so yeah I don't have any furniture I have my bed I have the children's bed uh, I have a few chairs, like the one I'm sitting on, like uh, classic Swedish chairs. I don't even have a dinner table, you know. So I don't have, like, I don't have a lot of furniture. Um, but of course, you know, I'm gonna have to sell the little stuff I have because I'm really poor at this point. I'm well below, below the poverty point since forever. Uh, I'm living on, I don't can't get any help from social services because I own my apartment. So I tried in March uh, to get some assistance from social services because I had, didn't have any money. Uh, I couldn't get that. So there's no way for me to get any money except me for selling nudes and uh, you know selling my ass basically. That is the only thing I can do for money. There's no other way. If I can't find a job and nobody will hire me, you know. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I do have a swish. Uh, if you go to my uh, homepage, uh, BDSM Sweden, at wordpress.com, my swish is on there. So you can absolutely try to, I would appreciate any, any anything because I'm really poor and I'm actually starving even though I gain weight because I eat pasta most of the days I just cook uh, pasta straight up and eat it with almost nothing on it so that is why I kind of gain a little bit water weight but otherwise I'm starving I am this is Sweden I pay paid over a almost 200,000 in taxes last year but uh, now I'm starving and I can't get any assistance from anywhere. Instead, instead they're taking my children and I've been crying about that for a year. Like, thank you, Sweden, you know. 
I'm doing well. Yeah, if everybody would give me a kroner, that would actually pay my rent for uh, two months. Uh, I can't pay all my bills at the moment. Um, I can't pay um, all the bills and I can't eat at the same time. So I can't even travel into the city. Uh, as much as I would like to, because you know, the commuter train costs too much. So, to all of you people who think my life is like fun, no, it's not. What I'm gonna do this summer? Survive, I would say. I will sur I will survive. Hey, hey. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm just trying to keep a roof over my head and food in my stomach, you know. That's what I'm gonna do this summer. Paying the electricity bill will be, you know, a um, luxury. So, <clears throat> yeah. So this is my dinner. Today, it's a luxury dinner. Uh, the bread cost like 10 kroners. I don't know about the tomato, but this is about, you know, maybe 40 bucks um, worth of food. So I eat, my, my food budget is like, today it's around 50, 60 kroners per day for food, including everything. I don't drink any coffee because anymore because I can't afford it. So I don't drink, I haven't been drinking coffee for um, some week or so now. I, to, I just cut down a lot and then I stopped entirely. So now I'm not drinking any coffee. Um, so, and my food budget is 60 kroners per day. About there. And then I drink wine because I want to forget my sorrows, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna drink wine. That's the only fun I can have. What should I do? Sit here by myself in my flat. I have no family, no friends. I can't see my children. I don't have a job, no colleagues. I can't go out because I can't buy anything. Um, what am I supposed to do? Just sit here and be sober and just think about all the misery that I'm in? I think maybe not. I will kill myself then, probably. If it keeps you from killing yourself, it's a good thing, you know. Cheapest kind of um, entertainment you can have. I can't afford anything else, you know. I don't use, I'm gonna use the money on what the fuck I want to, to survive. This is survival now, bitches. This is not like, oh, I wanna have some wine because everything feels so okay and nice and life is nice and I'm gonna, no, it's like, I don't wanna think about it. I've been surviving for years. I haven't had a job since 2019. I've been surviving, 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 surviving. A large portion of this time I've been surviving with kids, but you don't see that because I haven't been telling you always. You just come down on me really hard with, oh, you don't make enough food for the children. Oh, you don't, you drink too much wine. No, I'm fucking surviving. I don't have any money. I don't have a job. I don't have nothing. What am I supposed to do? It's survival. Every day I wake up with crippling anxiety. It's like, am I gonna survive? Am I going to be out on the streets? Am I going to pay the bills? You know, am I ever going to see my children 
over there. That is what I'm my reality, you know. And you just ah, you drink your wine. <laughs> yeah, you would too. You would fucking kill yourself in my situation. You would. If I sell my apartment, I will never find anywhere to live again. And um, uh, all the money I get from selling the apartment will go to taxes and uh, things like that. So I will not get a lot. I, I will not get a lot of money from selling my apartment because I owe a lot of taxes to the government and they're going to take it if I sell it. And then I can never get an apartment again, so I will live on the street. What about that? My social media and my job. I couldn't get a job before my social media either, you know. So there's no difference. I've been, um, I've been, uh, I don't I haven't had a job since 2019 and I started social media 2021 I started uh, TikTok and and you know so there was a lot of years in between there but I couldn't get a job either you know you know so, of course, I'm going to end up on the street or I'm going to have to sell my booty. I never see my children. I don't know what I did to deserve this. I paid taxes in this country for 20 years and I can't get... Now, when I'm in a, a little bit of a pickle, I can't get anything back from the state. The only thing they do is make my situation worse. Social services, tax services, you know, everybody. They're making my existence even more impossible, you know. Okay, yeah. Somebody paid my my um, taxes, um, 158,000 kroner in taxes last year. Otherwise, I would already be on the street, you know. Otherwise, I would already be on the street. And I might still end up on the street, you know, because um, nobody will hire me for some reason. Uh, I don't know why, because I'm more representable than most Swedes. I was sitting in Huddinge Centrum today on a bench waiting for the stores to open. I woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning with anxiety. I had a croissant, croissant, without coffee, but with anxiety, you know, and uh, I was sitting in Huddinge Centrum for half an hour until the stores open and um, tired. And uh, I was with people watching and sweets are fuck, they're ugly. They're fat, they're ugly. They're so ugly, so ugly. Unrepresentative slots. I'm like a shining star in the midst in a pile of shit. So I don't know why I can't, you know get a job because I outshine like 99.99% of Swedes have nothing on me, you know. Now I'm not bitter, but I, I'm just observing Swedes. They are so ugly, like the clothes people wear, the hairs, the lack of style like this is an ordinary day of a, a person that doesn't have i don't even have money to eat or pay my bills properly and this is the way i turn up like i'm still looking like a hundred bucks you know and i'm dressed up i don't have any makeup i look great What's your excuse? What's, what's your excuse for looking like shite, to be honest? But the fact, 
I looked at all the men walking by. They're boring. They all have the same fucking boring haircut. No hair color, no nothing. Um, like a big fat belly hanging over. Some fucking gym clothes slash work clothes. No style, no effort. What's their excuse? They have their lives together. They have an income. They have a family. They have everything that I don't have. And they still look like shit. And I still look like this. Yeah, I don't know. What's up with that? Maybe they're lazy. They're not impressing me. And also the girls like fat, boring, looking like shite. What's their excuse? They were all coming in to the, to the center to, to start their work day. They have a salary. I haven't had a salary in years. You know, I haven't had a salary in years and I still look like 100% better than they do. And I'm almost 50 and I still outshine girls that are not even 25. Like, hello girls, Auntie P is here shining her light and you look like shite. What's your excuse? You're young, you have a job, you have everything together and you still look like shit. you know. With all that money, I thought you could buy some taste, but I guess, guess you can't buy taste, you know. Mm. Style is important. How you carry yourself in everyday life is important. It is, it is actually, Oh, maybe I should do some Dumba. How you carry yourself in, uh, in everyday life is fucking important, just so you know. So, uh, I don't know why people think that it's okay to just, you know, are you wondering why your sex life isn't so good or why, you know, why you feel so miserable? Maybe it's just because, what the fuck happens here? Just to Like so. Like, what's your excuse? I don't know how long I've been live for a while, you know. Mm. So, I have been without the work for years. I've been sick. I have not been able to walk for half a year almost. I have uh, lost my children recently. I actually, actually, I am in a custody battle at the moment. I'm probably gonna lose my kids. I haven't been able to see them for almost a year. You know? I have had all kinds of terrible things happen to me this past year and a half maybe. And what do I look like? Oh, I'm just, Casually walking into Houdini Center to buy some, you know, bruschetta. And I still look like this. What is your excuse for looking like a fucking uh, ogre? Shrek! Like, where is the pride that, oh, I look like shit. I'm a better person because I look like shit. No, you look like shit. And you wake up every morning and you feel like shit. I'm sure of it. Yeah, having me as a neighbor, um, I tried to be nice to my neighbors when I first moved here. My goal was that next year they will all be having Christmas, a Christmas party at my place. That was my goal when I moved here. Do you think that goal was, that went down the drain because the people living here are fucking imbeciles. I mean, where are the social skills? I tried to be friendly. They fucking stabbed me in the back and turned me into social services. You know, funny and stole my mail and what the fuck. 
Hmm. Okay, tattoos are just fine. If people like them. I don't like them. I'm actually proud of my skin. It's very. I'm. I'm gonna show you something. Wait a second. Something that I bought. Um. When I go out, um, I have this, I bought this, I use this as a, a cover against the sun, so the sun won't burn me. So I go with this, you know. What's your excuse? I'm being stylish. What's your excuse? I'm being creative. I'm being stylish. And I have every reason not to be. Because my life is a shit show. But I don't look like a shit show. I look like, you know, fabulous. So I use this for cover to cover up from the sun, you know, like this. So I can keep my pale appearance. Yeah. Yeah, and I look like my health is really bad. I'm drinking so much wine that you can just look at me and tell that my health is really down the drain. I look like a really unhealthy 50 year old. Like my lifestyle must be really draining. Mm. I like this. This bow is like, you know, if I have a paper, I bought it secondhand. They had like 50% off the second-hand clothes in um, the Söda Turn Chirka um, store, second-hand store, the church of Söda Turn or whatever. Um, so when I came there, this is like a little bit, little bit big down here, but it's, I have a lot of tits nowadays. So uh, my tits are growing, maybe you know, gut milk or something. So it's a accurate up here, but a little big in down here, but that's okay. Nice, you know. If I'm going out today, I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford it. I go out um, at least once a week. I go to the Soul Train in uh, Medboya Plaza to dance, uh, mostly. Uh, it's like a, a nightclub with a little bit of, you know, my age group, so to speak. <laughs> there are also a little bit sort of older, older people, older people, you know. So I go there to dance. They have like a, a club called Soul Train. It's called Biblioteca at Merboya Platz. a really nice place. And I can get in for free. If I don't bring a jacket, I can get it in for free. I don't have to pay for a jacket if I don't bring it. And now it's warm outside, so I don't have to bring it. And then if I don't drink anything, I can still stay there and dance the whole evening. And sometimes, you know, uh, somebody buys me a, a glass of wine and, uh, and that's nice. So if you see me there, remember, I'm really poor. So please buy me a glass of wine. I, I like that, you know. Uh, and I like some company also, of course. It's not it's not safety pin, it's paper clips actually. One there, one there, because there these this uh, um, bowl used to be sewn into the dress right here, but it was a little bit broken when I, it's a second hand, so it had like ripped up, the, the bow was like hanging down like this. So I just put a couple of paper pins up there. I'm gonna buy, pay my rent today. Uh, I haven't, I've been, I have had so much anxiety. I have the money, but I have so much anxiety of giving away that kind of money. So th this is with me and bills. Like when I don't have a lot of money, it's the anxiety of taking almost all my money and put it on a bill. It's <gasps> It's like this. I will be eating spaghetti for a week now. Like, it's the anxiety of giving away the amount, that amount of money, when I don't re can't re I, I, It's so crippling that I'm like dissociating. I'm just lying on the bed. 
I can't, I can't. Yeah, but you have the money, just pay the bill. I just can't, it's too hard. Like, I don't want to give the money to you. I just want to live here for free. Can I live here for free until I get a job or something? Could I, please? Mm. Yeah. But this is also everything I'm gonna eat for 24 hours. And um, that means I'm, I go hungry a portion of the day. So wine helps against hungry, you know, and anxiety. You know? And it's summer, everybody's buying wine. Why shouldn't I be able to? Should I be like sober all summer because my life is miserable? While you all sit in your chair, in your garden, at your villa and sip, you know, box wine every evening. Oh, I, oh, I work at social services and I get like 60,000 every month. Oh my God. And I'm drinking my box wine here in my garden. Yeah, that's you. And, but when I do it, just because I just want to die, can I have a drink so I don't kill myself? That is not okay somehow, you know. And I haven't found my millionaire yet, but I will. I'm, I'm, I'm looking like for a rich man at the moment. Because they're nicer. Mostly. That seems to be the only way out for me. I can't get a job. I can't I can't earn money without the tax taxing system and everything and all the rules about that. So I can't make money. I can't get a job. I can't sell ass and that because no problem with the law. What am I supposed to do? Well, maybe I should just find a rich man. It seems like a good option since I look like I could actually be married to a millionaire. Billionaire, actually. I could actually be married to a billionaire the way I look. So maybe that's the best option for me. You know, maybe. You never know. I need to find a rich man. That's the only option for, for women in Sweden. In my situation, divorced, no job, a little bit of a health problem. Uh, the only thing that you can hope for is, you know, marry again, marry rich. I have no other option. The other option is just sell my apartment and move abroad, like go somewhere where I don't freeze when I don't freeze, it's up even, like down somewhere warm, but I don't freeze to death, you know. And sell my ass to, to, you know, truckers for a while and maybe get on my feet. Yeah, if I have to choose between wine and food, I would choose wine, actually. I would. I mean, wine is fun calories. It's very cheap. It doesn't cost much. And makes you feel good. Make, makes you able to sleep. Um, it also contains calories, so I can maintain my weight, sort of, without eating chips. You know, so wine, yeah. If I had to choose between, between wine and food, I would choose wine, for sure. The perks, you know. So I don't know why you're so hard on me, because my life is hard. My life has been hard since 2018, more or less. My life has been more or less a shit show. Okay, 2019, after the divorce. Um, and mostly because I can't find a job and nobody will help me and nobody will give me a chance because for some reason, I think you might be, I mean, there are stupider people than me having a holding a job in Sweden. I mean, there are a lot of people that are less talented, 
younger, less, less experienced, less smart, less good looking than me. They hold a job every day. So why the fuck can I get a job as anything? I've been looking for jobs, everything from, you know, personal assistant, cleaning lady, bartender, service, like a uh, waitress. Uh, and I have been holding much higher level job than that in my life. So, and I can't get any job, not, not here, not there, not anywhere. So, um, what I've been working with before, yeah, I've been working as a mark, uh, pro uh, project manager in communications and marketing, I would say. Um, I did a lot of things. I did like international trade shows in USA, uh, Germany, uh, UK, Russia, all over, uh, all over the place. Um, Asia, uh, international trade shows that I like. I was the project manager for them, uh, for a steel company. Then I have done also, you know, all kinds of marketing material, marketing communications, like uh, all the way from print to I've been mm, creating uh, uh, home pages for companies. I've been doing a lot of IT, like a project manager for a lot of um, IT projects. I've been working with branding, you know, branding, like, you know, my brand is pretty strong, isn't it? You know, I just, I am just a living brand. So I've been working with branding and um, customer journeys and shit like that. A lot of things. I'm also like worked as an engineer. When I first moved to Sweden, I worked as an engineer uh, in, a, in a lab, uh, try, uh, testing water cleaning equipment uh, in a startup. I worked in a startup when I first moved to Sweden. When I was 26, I worked in a startup for a couple of years. I tested their equipment for, for efficiency. Uh, and I've also made some marketing material for pools and stuff like that. So I don't know who Leverantur's company is. I probably fucked everybody at Leverantur's company. I have, I'm psychic, so I kind of... So yeah, I've been doing a lot of things, really. <clears throat> Uh, but somehow Sweden can't deal with me. I don't know why I can't get a job. I've been looking for a job for since uh, actively since 2021 after an injury and that during the injury when I couldn't walk and I had a nerve injury, back injury, leg injury, foot injury. Uh, I wasn't able to walk properly for a while and have a lot of pain. Uh, so I didn't look for a job during that time. But uh, after that, when I was like maybe in October 2021, I was able to walk without pain, sort of, <laughs> for a while at least. Uh, I had so then during this 2020, like last year, I had like some a couple of really bad episodes uh, with my back, and that actually put put me back a lot like in first one in the beginning of 2022 and then during the summer I was also really bad I, I couldn't uh, the last part of last summer I was really bad also I had a lot of pain uh, <laughs> yeah janitor at a, a church yeah I, I would do like sort of anything at this point that would just what I'm doing at the moment is hoping for people to buy my nudes, you know, that's interesting. Also, maybe I'm trying to maybe sell tarot readings or stuff like that because, you know, I can do it. But in Sweden, you, ha you shouldn't have to, to end up like me because what have I done that was so bad that I can't get a job? I mean.
Yeah, so my, my life is a shit show. So what I'm doing this summer, surviving. That is what I have been doing for many years. Surviving, not knowing if I'm gonna be able to stay, if I'm have, gonna have a roof over my head next month, or if I'm gonna be able to eat. If I'm even going to be able to afford going out and meet people. Because I'm a really lonely and I'm a social person. So I need to... Like going out is not just, you know... It's... <sighs> I need to go out and be amongst people, you know. I can't just sit here and rot, you know. I can't get any for certain instead. Or like... I have been in contact with social services uh, in the beginning when I when my uh, the money from the Arcas was like gone uh, last year or beginning of this year I didn't have any money I couldn't get any money from that anymore I contacted social services to to get help with my bills because I didn't have an income uh, they didn't. So I filled in like, I went into their homepage, filled in a form. Like then you have to tell exactly uh, how much you have to pay for the, your different kind of bills, what kind of income you have, like how much money do you have on your bank account uh, and things like so. And uh, I just sent that to social services and they just even didn't even give me an answer. They just sent me a set of rules for who is like, ha, who, what do you, like a rules for, for getting support from the social services. And one of the rules is you can't own anything that's worth anything. Like if you have a car, if you have an apartment or anything like that, then you won't get any support from them. So first you have to sell your car, you have to sell your house. You have to sell any other assets of any value that you might have, even though you might need it. Like you might, if you have a car, you might actually need that car to survive, you know, to, for your daily life. No, you can't, you can't get any support from social service. You have to sell your, everything you have first. So no, I, I've tried to get support from social services. I can't, they'd rather see me starve, you know. If I'm drunk, no. Do I seem drunk? I'm not drunk. I'm pretty, pretty sober, pretty clear in the head, actually. And English is also not my first language. I'm just speaking English here, like looking like this. Here I am, 50 years old, almost. I look like, you know, 30. Well dressed up in my secondhand clothes. My hair is long and thin. My skin is clear. My weight is on point. Um, I'm smart. I speak English like a motherfucker. And uh, still can't get a job in Sweden, you know. I'm still sitting here starving, worrying. I should be living my best years of my life. Instead, I'm sitting here eating bruschetta, starving. No, I'm not, to be a translator in English, you almost have to be kind of a native. In, you have to be native speaking. So, uh, like, a, since English is not my first language, and it's, I'm not a native speaking it. It's English, I've been learning English later in life. So, it's a, been a work language for me for over a decade. I used English as my work language almost daily. So that is why I'm, you know, speaking English because I'm kind of comfortable because it has been a language that I have been using every day in my work. So. Uh, now I haven't been speaking it for some years. I'm a little bit rusty. It's coming back, but you know, I used to be pretty fluent, but 
if you have, want to be a translator, <laughs> you need to... I've been working with translators a lot for different languages. You need a native speaker because otherwise you will get in trouble. Yeah, I promise you. Uh, I used... You need to have someone that speaks the language as mother tongue to do the translation, translation for you. So no, I can't do that. I've <clears throat> yeah, I've been seeking all kinds of, you know, uh, positions like cleaning, cleaning lady, uh, personal assistant, things like so. I've been, you know, I can't get it. I don't even get an answer. They totally ignore me. Yeah, the custody case uh, actually would be in that custody was um, the main hearings was this week, earlier this week. Um, I couldn't go. My mental health wouldn't let me. I just couldn't go, um, go there uh, because I couldn't face my ex-husband and sit there and offend myself against these lies and allegations against me being a bad mother, a bad person, doing bad decisions, doing bad things. Everything about me is apparently bad. And so I just wrote and I can't afford a lawyer to, to do it for me and I don't have any, I'm not a trained lawyer. So I feel I would do more harm than good saying anything so i just wrote them and told me because of mental health um since i've been a, a, a line, like since i this it's been almost a year that i haven't been able to see my kids i'm not doing well my mental health is suffering because of this so i can't do this i can't sit with my ex-husband in a courtroom being accused of this and that and God knows what. So I just wrote them, I can't, I have to prioritize my mental health. So please proceed without me. So they did. So I'm waiting on the results. So I didn't even go. I didn't even go. Because uh, I need to prioritize my mental health. I'm surviving here, I'm in survival mode. I need to focus on being creative so I can get my money because I need to make, you know, videos, nudes. I need to market myself, get money in. And I can't do that if I'm miserable, you know. My main income is my OnlyFans. Like, I need to be able to do inspired erotic videos to survive at this point. And uh, I can't do that if I'm miserable. So I had to do a pretty hard judgment call. I, I can't deal with this. Uh, I just have to accept that whatever they're gonna do, they're gonna do. Uh, I can't. I, most of the, allega the allegations that they do is completely false. And I feel like I have, I can't afford a lawyer. I don't know what to say, what to do in those cases. So better I stay away, you know. So I don't know how, the, how it went. Uh, it was two days, uh, the 12th and the 13th. Um, dude, it was the hearing supposed to be, but I didn't go. So if you want to trade places with me, please do, you know, I don't think you would survive. People, if people uh, would not look this like this uh, after a year of my life, this year that I have been through, it's been hell. It's still hell, you know. So I'm just glad I haven't killed myself, basically. That's where we are at. And I just made a judgment call that 
I don't want to kill myself, so I can't, I can't submit to this. I just can't go to court and sit there for two days and uh, listen to some my ex-husband accusing me for whatever. Like, I'm a bad person, I'm a bad parent, I'm a bad person, I'm a bad parent, I'm a bad person, I'm a bad parent. I can't do it, you know. Of course, I will come home and kill myself. And as endearing my children are, and as, as much as I would like to be with them, I'm not going to die for them, you know. So could you just please give me a break? My life is hard. I just look good. My life is still hard. So I don't know why you're still blaming me. Maybe the problem isn't me. I said, oh, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. Yes, I look like a problem. Yes, the problem is me. I'm so unhealthy and I'm so dumb. I'm bad parent, you know. I sell my pussy, you know. And then I sit in Hooding Center and watch the people walk by and they look like shit all of them and they have this still have their lives together and they still look like shit I don't know and they're mean also like you monthly so if you're doing really well in life like I suppose you Karens out there are you're doing really well I have a job, I'm a good mom. Then why are you picking on me? Could you ask yourself that? Why are you so hard on me? Did I do something to you? No, I probably did not. Uh, why don't you enjoy your life that is so well put together? Enjoy your life and leave me alone. Why don't you? Because you do really have to ask yourself that. Like, if your life is so well put together, go on vacations every year, have a job, have a family, have a house, why the fuck do you feel have the need to pick on someone like me? That's really just surviving and struggling in life, you know? And I was you once. I was you once. I had a job, I had a family, I had a villa. In a few years, you could be me. Cheers. Yeah, living a dinger with my sister vibes. Yeah. Some of them have cocks, some don't, you know. Polyamory is a Swedish thing also. You also have to have many bitches. Yeah, please, yeah, please, you know, pick on me. If you want someone to pick on, choose the girl who doesn't can't afford rent and has to sell nudes for a living. You know, pick her. Pick her and, you know, use her to, you know, put down that it makes you a very nice person you know because sure you need to pick on someone weaker than you of course you know i'm not doing well any day i've not been doing well for years i have crippling anxiety uh, i'm worried i overthink i'm always in survival mode uh just scraping by day by day, worrying about the future. I don't have a job. I can't pay my rent. I can't, you know, this and that. And just being miserable, more or less. Also meeting shitty people that think it's a good joy, joke to, to pick on me, of all people. Because, like, I don't have it hard enough, like, 
yes, we're gonna pick her. We're gonna pick Gredis and we're gonna make her life miserable. My life is already miserable. It's been for years and years and years and years. So I don't know, can't you pick on someone your own size, you know? And what's going up in your head? Like, stupid people. Yeah, people are pretty horrible. That is also the worst anxiety I almost have had during these years um, that I've been unemployed and by myself and trying to get by, sometimes with two kids. People are fucking terrible. They're horrible. Like, people are genuinely horrible. They're so mean. They're evil. They're murderous, you know. They actually want to drive me to suicide. That is their goal. Horrible. Totally horrible. And then you blame me for drinking a little bit of wine in the evening. Well, I get a lot of hate, don't I? You know. Uh, I'm a victim of abuse from many instances. I've been through hell this last year. Um, I've been betrayed by my ex-husband, by my family, by several people I've dated have done me really dirty on purpose. I think they even looked me up just to harm me because maybe they knew who I was. Uh, and uh, they just looked me up to date me, to hurt me, you know. People are genuinely really horrible. And that is actually the greatest anxiety for me, is waking up every day knowing that people are actually that evil. I don't have anybody. I'm totally by myself and been for many years. I have no friends, no family. I have no co-workers, I can't see my children, I don't have any pets, I don't have any... I've been dating people very seldom, like maybe a couple of people this last year that I've been seeing, you know, and not in a... just dating superficially. So I'm all alone, so why do you pick on me, honestly? Why do you pick on me? Could you just, in your heart, like, could you just wrap your little brains around that I'm miserable, I've been for years, I'm struggling, my life is not perfect, I'm just good looking, I just look good, and I'm just smart. That doesn't mean my life is together or anything. Uh, my life is still terrible, you know. I worry about the future every day. Yeah, they paid my debt. Oh, thank God. Otherwise, I would be on the streets. I might still end up on the streets. You know, I might still end up on the streets. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of it. What should I do to get out of it? I'm trying. I need to get money every month. I, I just can't, you know, wait a few months to get money. I have to have money every month. You know, several thousands. I need to kind of get it from somewhere, legally, sort of. I don't have a job. I can't get anything from social services. I have no, no, nothing from, from, um, I don't get any money from anywhere. Uh, all the money I have is money I earn myself by selling nudes. That is all the money that is paying the rent this month. I don't know about next month, you know. So I have to be just creative and and do social media and to, to marketing myself and make nice nudes, sort of, you know. No, like, yeah, you say I could go like, go like some kind of education through employment services. No, uh, yeah, I could. I would make like 200 kroners a day doing that. I make more than, that is about what I make maybe 
uh, from my OnlyFans. So maybe I choose OnlyFans then instead of putting my energy towards something I will never work with anyway because I don't like it like some kind of uh, construction worker or something like that. Um, I will never enjoy it, I will never work it, as it said, it will never put my energy towards that. Uh, then I would rather do OnlyFans and make that money there, you know. So that is something I've been thinking about. It's not as secure, but it's, you know, more, more aligned with why, what I like to do still. No, I don't have a secured economy. Uh, how could I have, you know? Everyone who has been trying to make their own money without having a salary from somewhere. No, like being an entrepreneur, it's like that. Uh, being your own, making your own money, being self-made, you know that it's not secure. You don't know how much money you're gonna have at any point. You don't know if anybody's gonna pay for what you're offering. I don't know like how much money I'm gonna make next month. I don't know if I'm gonna make any. So there's a lot of people trying to get by by doing some kind of business, which is essentially what I'm trying to do, you know. And uh, those people don't have the security of knowing how much money you're gonna have every month. If you work at social services, as a boss at social services, as a children's unit, you will, will have like 60,000 kroner every month, like into your bank account. And you know this, so you can plan ahead because you know this money is always coming in, you know, no matter, how, no matter what, almost. But I don't know that. You know, I don't know that. And I also, you know, have to keep slim and fit and looking good because that is actually what I make money off. I make money off my looks. Isn't that a little bit sad? I'm almost a 50 year old woman and I still have to make money off my looks. You know, I think it's a little bit sad. So I can't gain weight and I can't dress bad and I can't be in a bad shape because I make money off how I look, you know. Yeah, you don't know. You understand how many of you have been in my position ever? You know, you're summer's ch you owe oh, you summer's children, I would say. You've never been in my position, so you wouldn't know how that is. You have people, mommy takes care of you, or social services take care of you, or you have a job, or yeah, live at your parents' house, or something like that. I don't. This has been my whole life since I was 18 years old. Uh, this has been me. I've been providing for myself since, since I was 18. Before I started working, I, when I was 13, 14 years old, I started earning my own money. And I've been earning my own money Ever since I've been earning my own money, ever since I was 13, 14, somewhere, somewhere there when I started working. I've been earning my own money, buying my own things with my own money since I was 13 years old. Now I am almost 50 and I'm still doing this all by myself, like always. Nobody has ever provided for me, not even when I lived with my husband even though he made more money than me, we were, our economies were split. I made my money, he made his money. So I just lived more fancy, but I still just had my money that I made myself by working. When the children were small, I worked. Uh, so I've been working. So I don't know why you... So I've been providing for myself since I was, since forever. <laughs> no. Yeah, that was the only only time they did that, and that is they did because of my children, because they want my children to get the apartment after I die, more or less. They don't care about me. My parents don't care about me. Fuck no. 
so yeah so I have never had anyone to call could you mama swish like a hundred like a hundred bucks I don't have money to eat no I've never been able to do that and I actually done it once once in my fucking whole life I called my mom and asked for money I didn't I had like two days I had no money I had two days until payday uh, I was starving. I was like 56 kilograms. Uh, I was really starving. So I called her and said, I need money. I can pay you back. And I paid her back. 300 bucks I borrowed from my mom for to be able to survive a couple of days. I didn't have anything, anything. I was hungry. And I paid her back. That's the only time I did that. You can go to my homepage, BDSM Sweden, BDSM Sveria at WordPress.com. Uh, there you can find my Swish. So uh, everything that you can send is going through, towards the electricity bill, the phone bill, and uh, yeah, that electricity and phone and Wi-Fi, to be honest. So yeah, so I'm not ashamed. I've been like working my whole life. Working nine to five, what a way to make a living. Barely getting by. Yeah, and my, I have one fault. I'm drinking wine instead of, you know, cola or coffee. I don't drink coffee. I don't eat sweets. Uh, I don't eat chips, I don't eat fika, I never eat anything of that, I don't eat dessert, I don't eat sugar, I never eat sweets, candy, anything of that, never, ever, 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 and I don't even drink coffee, I don't smoke, but I do drink some wine, can I drink some wine, if that's my only, you know, fault can i have one fault i drink a drink wine that i choose i've chosen my poison and it's wine i don't have any other poisons you know as you can see my skin is i don't wearing any makeup at the moment i look like shit i know i'm almost 50 years old and i really look like you know i'm not taking care of myself very well you know <laughs> No, I don't want a dog. Uh, I, a dog costs money. People who have a dog can't complain because dogs cost money, you know. And uh, no, never, never getting a dog. Also, they smell, and I don't. I can't do with the smell of dog smell. It's like um, I don't like the smell of dog, and they're dirty, and they are uh, cost money. They're stupid. I have to scoop up their poops and put them in a plastic bag. I don't like that. A dog costs, I like people. You put more, like there are, there are dogs in this country that live a better life than I do. People care more about dogs than they care about me. That's also a realization. All these people that sit here in my comments and then they go and feed like duck liver pate to their little dog who, who who lies in their bed all all day and gets pampered, doesn't have to pay any bills, can shit on the shit everywhere and somebody will pick it up. They get like duck liver pate and f like fromage de pate the dog every day, like three times a day. Uh, they get cuddled with all the time, you know. Everybody thinks they're cute. They get away with anything. People treat their dogs better than they treat me. Realization. 
Yeah, and then you go, yeah, 20,000 on a dog, exactly. And then you go to the, the wet and you have to, to pay like 20,000 for some kind of operation. Nobody paid 20,000 for anything. I didn't get an operation when my leg went bust three years ago. They were thinking about doing an operation. They didn't. No, you don't need an operation. It will get better. Yeah, now three years later, I'm still not good. I still tripped, like, <laughs> I regularly trip and fall just because my, my foot is like, I can't feel it. So sometimes I just <sighs> miss and fall. It happens now and then. So this is the second time in a year that my, my knee looks like this because I fell. Um, yeah, I'm actually, no, I'm not jealous. I'm just, I'm just observing that people treat their dogs better than they treat other people. People will choose the life of a dog over another human being. It's the truth. They could easily step over like a man sleeping. Like when I was walking home late one evening, Södra Station in Stockholm. When I walked into Södra Station, there is a man just looks like any man you would see anywhere. He was not a bum or anything. Like, looks like a middle class dude sleeping uh, in the entrance. Like, sleeping on the floor in the entrance um, with uh, his rucksack under his. Uh, nowhere to go. There are a lot of homeless men in Stockholm. I see them everywhere. They sleep. They look like they might even have jobs, some of them, but they have nowhere to live. And uh, he was just living that, lying there. Nobody cared. Everybody walks past him. If a dog would be left there, people would care immediately. Oh, whose dog is this? Maybe we should rescue this dog. Oh, poor dog. But this man, oh, he's a bum. Like, he probably deserve it. Like, I'm not even gonna look. So yeah, people do treat dogs better than they treat people. Because if someone would abandon their dog on town, oh my God! Ah! And, and a lot of like fucking 50 year old faggots will just run and rescue the dog. Like it would be like a Facebook thing. Rescue the dog! Oh my God, the dog! But when you see like a 50 year old man lying in Södra station with nowhere to go, or uh, another, I see these people all the time, homeless people, you know, or this woman, like 60 year old woman with all her bags, nobody's rescuing her. Nobody's rescuing me either. Nobody's coming to rescue me. If I was a dog, somebody would already have adopted me and I would be living my best life as some nice gay guy's home, probably. Getting duck pate, which I love, by the way, I love a duck. So I would be eating that every day and he would pamper me and buy clothes. People buy clothes for their dog. He would buy like a whole new wardrobe of clothes and he would, you know, spa treatments and do my nails and, you know, duck liver pate every day. If I was a dog, somebody would already, and nobody would call me a doll, gold digger for it. Uh, but if I want to be rescued by a rich man, you call me a gold digger and you wish me to hell. Like, you rather see me take my own life and live on the streets. But if I was a dog, I would already have been rescued. You know, maybe I should be a dog. <laughs> Like so. Yeah, so yeah, there are people all, everywhere in Stockholm that have nowhere to live. Uh, by the way, if any of you that have nowhere to live, want somewhere to live, I have like a vacancy here at my apartment. I would love to, if you want somewhere to live, mi casa su casa, you know, so. Mm. 
just contact me in the DMs if you have somewhere to live. I just, I usually when I see someone sleeping on the pavement, I sometimes go up and say, do you have somewhere to stay at tonight? Do you have somewhere to stay at night? Do you need somewhere to stay? I'm just checking and I would gladly, if they would, if they don't have anywhere to stay or if they want somewhere to stay, I would gladly offer them a place to stay. Yeah, I do actually. I do ask them if they have somewhere to stay. I do. I'm gonna, I'm usually asking them if they're okay and if, uh, are you okay? Or do you have somewhere to sleep? Uh, nobody has, um, they usually have somewhere to sleep. They have like some kind of, um, some place to sleep usually, or they're okay where they're at. They have turned me down. I've been turned down by people on the street. Like, um, they're, they're okay. No, no worries. Like I got it. So nobody has said yet, yes yet, but I have offered a few times. Uh, do you have somewhere to stay? Do you need somewhere to stay? Are you okay? Because uh, I know that if I was in that situation, I would gladly say yes to that. But if, I, if they were a dog, they would be adopted. Because they're human, they get to sleep on the street. Because we treat dogs better than humans. That is why I don't like dog owners very much. Because their morals are out the windows. And that's why I kind of like Chinese. Because they eat dogs. Because, yeah. I would never take care of a dog. I don't care about dogs. Uh, I care about human beings. So, animals, I eat animals and I don't care about them. I care about my own species mostly. Yeah, I know people view dogs as family. That's okay. But you still have to, to reflect on the fact that you treat a dog better than you treat people. It's the fact. And that is troublesome. You just have to acknowledge it. You know, meditate on that a little bit. Yeah, you adopted a dog. She lived on the street. Would you help a human being to get somewhere to sleep? No, you wouldn't. Why is that, though? I have like been living in this apartment alone for almost a year. Uh, I advertised for someone to come live with me. I can't find anyone who wants to live here. Uh, I would love to help someone. If you don't just, you know, need somewhere to sleep at night, I'm not afraid of people, you know. So um, people should be afraid of me rather. So yeah. I would love to help someone if, or if they want to take a shower or whatever, you know, or just talk because I also need to talk to someone and I'm, for me, uh, who almost always are this close to being on the street myself, it's really hurtful to see that people don't, they don't care. People are so cold hearted. So cold hearted. So, if I would change something to get a job, I would absolutely, I don't need to change anything to get a job because I know how to, I have been holding high end jobs for decades. So I can absolutely, uh, behave you know i can dress i can carry myself in international settings 
uh, in companies in national settings. I've been working like that for decades. So uh, I can absolutely do that more than you because this is what I look like in, on a normal day in suburban Huddinge with no money. I still look like a million dollars and I still behave like a fucking queen, you know. So yeah, I can behave. I can absolutely behave. I have a sharp mind. I have a sharp tongue. I dress sharp. I'm, I'm like stellar. So yeah, I could absolutely hold a high-end job, you know. I have everything it takes to do that. In fact, and I'm gonna someday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? If you work like a little, you know, accountant at, at some, you know, office in downtown, then you know you have to dress like a, a timid little mouth. But if you are like a CEO of a hard hardcore company then you need to dress like you own the place. And that is what I'm doing. So I'm actually, that is like where I am at. So I can absolutely hold like a high-end job. I know how to speak for myself. I have to descend, uh, defend myself. I have my opinions. I know how to dress. I know myself. I have my style. I look great, you know. So I'm a catch, you know. So that's, that's the truth. There are not many Swedes that live up to my standards, to be honest. They're not. I'm top notch. Uh, but it's gonna come to me. If it's not coming to me, I'm gonna make it somehow myself. If I'm so gonna go through the streets and through bankruptcy or anything, I'm gonna fucking do it. Because that, I'm that woman, you know? I'm that woman. Because if you were me, you would look like shit. You would be dead. If you, you, if you would have gone to live my life the last few years, uh, you would be dead, some of you. You would be on medication, most of you. I mean, not even taking any medications. I'm just, you know, self-medicating a little bit. Okay, but hey, we're all, no, nobody's perfect. And um, if you're gonna be like a, a high-end, professional you need to know how to hold your liquor you need to know how to how how you react if you're on, like on a party and you get a little bit to drink what's happening like yeah you need to know your limits you need to know how much you can drink you need to know how you react to drinking and you need to have a certain kind of tolerance for alcohol you can't just, you know, drop under the table after a beer. That's, that won't work. So you, need, you have to be like a low-key alcoholist, uh, uh, alcoholic, if you're um, going to be in any show, social settings. Uh, you need to be able to drink and know how you react. And I've been practicing. Yeah, actually, this is... Um, in my last job I had, and that was actually pretty true. Uh, I you all a lot of times found me in settings with with sales personnel, with you know senior management, CEOs. I lo I worked at the headquarters, and I often found myself in on parties, business meetings that there where they served alcohol, a lot of it. And I was a female, everybody uh, everybody else was a male, and they were drinking like, like you know, cra Swedish uh, crayfish party. Uh, everybody's drinking, you know, schnapps and everything. And I'm uh, like a small female, and everybody else is like a 50-year-old man, and I'm like a 30-year-old female. And I'm sitting there, and my CEO is there, and the chief of financials are there. So I'm, I'm having the two top senior management on both my sides, and they're serving schnapps like this, and people are dropping, like crawling out. And I have to now navigate that situation. If you never had alcohol in your life, you're gonna be dead then. But I was looking sharp, 
in my high heels and I was the fucking only one walking out like and I sang I sang schnapps songs I drank schnapps I watched like much older men fall to the ground and crawl out in the garden uh, and uh, CEO there chief of financial officer there skull 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 yeah, you have to be able to kind of, if you're going to be in that kind of setting in Sweden, you need to know how to drink a little bit of alcohol. Just saying a lot of alcohol, actually. And you have to, you know, you, you need to have been in that kind of setting before. You need to have been like in a setting where they're going to serve you a lot of liquor and you're sitting next to senior management or you're sitting in the table of the CEO. And they just wine, schnapps, join, and the CEO is talking to. I've been in those situations a hundred times, sitting in the table with the CEO of my company, and he's talking to me, and I, I have to behave. And they're serving food, and they're serving hard liquor, like the whole evening. So yeah, it's a skill, you kind of a skill set that you need to have. You need to be able to hold a little bit of liquor. Yeah. So that is a skill. Do you, nobody talks about it, but you can't be the person. I have seen people that get so drunk after one beer that they, they're they just, you know, making fools of themselves. They have never been drinking. They don't know what they're doing. So, yeah. Skull. Yeah, I'm actually, you need to be able to hold your liquor a little bit. And I'm fucking pro. For, for being a small female, I'm pretty good at that because I've been in these kinds of settings that I need to drink a lot and still, you know, like now, talk to a lot of people. I'm sitting here now with a live of 122 people. It's like, if I... If I was in a seminar and um, I had a crowd of 122 people listening to me, this is what I'm doing right now after a, quite a bit of wine still. So, yeah. it's a skill set. What's the most important thing in my life? Good question. My sons are the most precious things in my life. Um, they are pretty much the only per, the only people I like, more or less, are my sons. Um, other than that, uh, for me, money is important, to be honest. I like money, I like the good life. I would like to have a career, I would like to earn a lot of money. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like shopping, I like good food, I like... Clothes. I like, you know, to buy clothes. I like to buy good food. Uh, I haven't been able to afford duck in a long while. Uh, I like that. But it's like 350 kroner per kilogram, so I can't afford it. But I love it. And, uh, yeah. Also being, you know, able to buy something else than the cheapest wine. Or to buy something nice, you know, even though I, I do buy nice clothes, even though I buy them secondhand, but I really like buying clothes. <laughs> I really like it. You know, or go to a spa or, you know, travel somewhere, do something, go out and maybe have a nice dinner at a restaurant, don't have, like, things like so. And I love money and I like to live nicely, uh, I like to do all those things. I want to have a little toy boy that I can spoil, you know. Um, maybe I could just adopt a homeless man and spoil him, you know. I would love to do it. I don't know what's happening with my boys. I don't have, I've already given up. Um, I don't think I'm going to get custody. I think they're going to take it from me. But uh, any day now, maybe by the end of this week, I will know, you know. 
And if I lose custody, well, then I have to just live with that. Then I have to, the thing with that is then maybe I can, you know, actually pursue a career because I don't have any children. There's that. And also it will be maybe better for me if I can actually maybe find love because it's really hard to, to date and go out and do anything when you have children and you're a single mom and have children to take care of. It's really hard to meet somebody because nobody, you can't take anybody home. Like, you know, you can't meet, you can't meet pe new people. Like you can't meet men and men are hesitant to meet like a woman with kids, you know? So there's the, just to look at the positive sides of it, I could probably concentrate on my career. I don't have to worry about that I can't provide for my children, which, which I can't at the moment. I don't have the money to have children at the moment because I can hard, hard, hardly eat myself. Well, of course, I am the most important person in my life because without me, my life wouldn't exist, you know? Uh, if I die and don't take care of myself, I do not exist, you know? And children will have no mother at all. And I don't think they would prefer that. Actually, yeah, you, you might have opinions about my look. My opinion is that I look good. Uh, I can't afford a gym membership. I used to go to the gym a lot. Uh, I don't now. Uh, like a year and a half ago, I just decided I can't afford to go to the gym anymore. So I can't go, go to the gym. I can't go to yoga class. I can't go to spas. I can't do my nails, I can't go, you know, do my hair or anything. I, everything I do, I need to, I I'm just need to be natural and I've colored my hair with like a box dye. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I've done this year. I don't even have makeup most days. I don't have nails. Yeah, I have actually bought some clothes. Uh, I bought for 60 kroners on sale this dress. Um, Second hand dress. It's not really my color, but I like the style. It's pretty cute and I kind of like dressing like a doll a little bit. So I bought this and uh, what else did I buy? I don't know where I, I, I bought a yellow t-shirt also uh, and a crunchy maybe I'm gonna see if I have my t-shirt here somewhere on that so I bought this this is kind of my color so I would use this with like a black skirt when I go out maybe look like so and there's the heart I like I like hearts are kind of a little bit my thing. And then I bought this necklace. It's like a chain and I like a plastic yellow heart. I have like a history of heart necklaces. Uh, I used to have like a necklace with a anatomic heart and I have, have a, then I have this long st uh, strap with a red heart with an N on it. And then I have, now this yellow heart, which is nice looking and just like my style, very much my style. And then also I bought a crunchy, scrunchy because it was there, you know, <laughs> a second hand scrunchy. But um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Maybe I'm gonna just, you know. You know, I tried to put this in my hair today, but somehow I didn't quite look good in my with my hair up. I look better with my hair down nowadays because my hair is healthy, you know. 
So that I bought, and then I bought also, you know, this red umbrella, uh, which I use for the sun, you know. Yeah, I look like a train wreck, I know. So I use it for the sun. I get a sun rash uh, really badly. I have had terrible uh, rashes on my uh, arms these last days from the sun. So I've tried to avoid it. I, can't, I almost go in, I, I know from history that I almost go into like an allergic, allergic shock sometimes when I'm in the sun too much. So I need to, to protect myself. So that is what I bought yesterday. You like it? Uh, sunscreen doesn't really help. It helps a little bit, but it doesn't help against the, the sun allergy. I, I get like, it's like the skin is swelling up. I swell up, like my hands swell up, my skin swell up. I get this um, rash, like these prickles all over, like white, red, pinkish. And I, I get so sick, I feel sick, I almost get a fever. It's, it can be really nasty. Um, and I've had it, I had my arms were in the sun this couple of days and I, they were itching all night yesterday. So I'm trying to keep out of the sun. I can't take it at the moment. I'm not gonna show my toilet, what the fuck? Why do you wanna see my toilet? So when I was on a vacation in the Caribbean a few years ago, I got almost like a, we were on a day trip on a boat and um, I used sunscreen probably 50 <laughs> during the whole trip. And uh, I was on a boat like going to an island all day and I had such a bad reaction to the sun. I can't, you know, uh, I just swole up, my fingers was like sausages, I was feeling really bad, I had this rash all over. Uh, it can get really bad. Sometimes, like later in the summer, it's usually better, the sun is not that hard on you. But right now it's pretty hard, so I need to stay out from the sun, I can't. I also don't get like, I, I don't get a tan, really. <laughs> I don't tan very well. I just get like a slight tan if I'm lucky. So I don't tan. So I, there's no reason for me to even try. <laughs> uh, what perfume am I using? Right now I, I would like, I, my perfumes are a little bit, I will show you. Uh, my perfumes are a little bit, I'm out of perfumes. I haven't been able to buy. I have a few that I use, a couple. Um, one of them I bought Life 60. I like, I use this. Like, as, what is it? Eau de Parfum, uh, Paradiso. It's like a uh, cheap perfume, you know, from a dollar shop. Uh, it's like a fresh, you know, like fruity kind of smell, a little bit summery, light. But then I have still some uh, Tom Ford. Um, I have a little bit left, not much. Black Orchid. Um, this is the perfume that I've been using. It's a little bit heavier than now. I'm more into the the kind of girly, a little bit of uh, girly, um, sweet perfumes, like a little bit childish. I'm like kind of a little little bit of a living doll, so I like a little bit of a juvenile smell like candy or sweet fruits or things like so vanilla yeah uh, yeah it's really hard the sun rash can be really bad it's like really a ha harsh reaction and i i was like mm. so i'm just staying out of the sun for some reason i can't to this year, I can't deal with the sun. I, I'm, I get, I get like my whole body starts itching. I can't deal with it. <laughs> Did 
Did you see me on the train? Yeah, I'm, I usually do. Yeah, now I'm just gonna use now um, end this live for today. Thank you for uh, keeping me company uh, while I eat. And uh, nice to be here again doing lives, you know. Um, and um, wish me luck with everything because I sorely need it, you know. And if you see me sleeping in on Södra Station, please offer me somewhere to sleep because that might be it soon. You know, I can't pay my bills this. Um, I'm gonna pay my rent, but uh, I also have the electricity bill and the Wi-Fi, and I can't pay the phone. I can't do that. And I also need to eat. So yeah. Life is fun. <laughs> I don't know when I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have a live maybe once a week, sort of. So this was this week. So maybe next, next week again, um, or if I feel like it before that, but I, I think once a week and maybe if I'm like, have enough money to do a live somewhere else than in my home, you know, if I could do a live from town or somewhere, but then I need to pay for for internet and I can't afford it, to be honest. So that, that is why I do it from home. Okay, have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you and fuck off.